All right, we're going to start that over. Um, thanks for joining, guys. This is your girl, Tied Up X, and this is Ink Therapy. Uh, today we have a super special um, episode, uh, a family special. So it's going to be the family version of the show. Uh, we have Keech and Tim Furlow, um, both artists at Black Owl Tattoo in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, before we get started, I'm going to mention just a few of our sponsors. That's how we keep this shit going. That's how I stay cute. Um, we got Bang Bomb. Shout out to Bang, um, one of my really close friends uh, at Bang Inc., Ink Master, competitor, also Atlanta artist. She has some amazing um, ointment that is used for, uh, you could use it during tattooing, but also primarily used for aftercare. Shout out to Bang Bomb. Um, she's doing specials. If you purchase Bang Bomb, you get a certain percentage off of your tattoo. So make sure you check her out at Bang period Inc. Um, another one of our sponsors is Hood Rat Shit. Um, I'm wearing this super cute crop top that you can't see. It's very croppy, but super cute. Uh, urban streetwear. Um, shout out to Hood Rat Shit for that. Um, and also your tresses. If you want your girl to have inches like this, shout out to your tresses. Hit her up, my girl Neek. Um, just a few of our sponsors. I'm going to let the guys take a second to introduce themselves. Like I said, they're from Black Owl Tattoos in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'll let Tim start. His Instagram is at Tim Furlow. Tim, tell us a little bit about yourself. Originally from, how'd you get started? Describe your tattoo style. We want to know a little bit of everything about you. Go ahead. Wow, okay. Well, uh, Tim Furlow. Um, been tattooing for about, uh, nah, shit. Been doing good tattoos for the past eight years. Uh, <laughs> I was scratching for about two years before that. Um, originally from Georgia, born and raised. I started tattooing because, uh, you know, my brother came home one day. Not this brother. We have like six of them. Okay. Um, one of them came home with a real shitty tattoo, and I was just like, you know, I could have did that. And next thing you know, I'm off to the races and scratching people up. That's how I'm doing that. And I got an apprenticeship, and the rest is it. Love it. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. I don't know. I love the transparency and honesty of the uh, been tattooing uh, well for eight years before that and a little bit of track tats mixed in there. Yeah, man, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, also, you were on the season um, of Ink Angels, season one, correct? Was. And we'll, was. Well, I'm excited to, to get into that a little bit. Reality TV is my least favorite thing, but it's also my favorite thing to shit on and talk about. So we'll we'll get into that in just a second. Um, Keech, uh, Instagram at fake Jesus. Absolutely love this man's Instagram name. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself. Um, how long you've been tattooing? Describe your style a little bit. Uh, just like my brother, I'm from Atlanta, born and raised. Um, grew up on the east side. Uh, tattooing, I, I also actually, a few weeks ago, this is my like first official year tattoo. So, you know, like uh, I took a different approach though. So, cause uh, my, my brother, he he took the hard road for me. So, you know what I mean? So I didn't- Sometimes you, know, you got to take the hard way. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. So uh, I actually apprenticed at Black Hour. So I did my apprentice thing for about two years, then switched over and now I'm a full time tattoo artist. So a week or so ago, is my first year anniversary. So if y'all wanna love it, love it, clap it up for that. Yeah. Congratulations, that's huge. Honestly, um, I think uh, a lot of people, you know, sleep on. Uh, well, I would say a lot of people who are outside the tattoo community sleep on the process um, that you artists take. You know, in order to get to where you are, um, apprenticeship is is no ho. <laughs> you know, and that's just from someone looking on the outside in. Um, so I can only imagine, you know, the stuff that you all have had to go through in order to um, get to the level where you're at now. So I appreciate your commitment to that. Obviously, your clients appreciate it. Um, your work, both of your works are phenomenal. Um, so I'm really excited for this episode to uh, talk to y'all both about how it all started and, and also how, uh, how it is to have a brother working right next to you in the same industry. So we're going to get into that. Um, I decided to name this episode Why You Walk Like That, Why You Talk Like That, because we're going to talk about tattoos and genetics, right? So we talked a little about how y'all got started, 
Um, we know Tim took the heart away a little, a little, <laughs> a little more than than Keech. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, like um, I'm sure that there's been opportunities, um, you know, that Tim has gotten from other artists, and you know, as well as kind of like a passed down thing, you know. Um, I think that that's one of the most beautiful things about the tattoo community. One of the things I love the most is how much of a community it is, and it's it's interesting because I got. Are you having trouble hearing me? Yeah, we lost you for like a quick second. Um, um, maybe the last like the last seconds. like twenty seconds. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a long ass time. <laughs> it wasn't twenty. It was like ten. It was like ten. It was like ten. Like 10. Twenty seconds is a long time. <laughs> that's that's all right that's all right we're gonna we're gonna keep it pushing um i was speaking on basically um the tattoo community and how long story short everyone does something for somebody right at the end of the way at the end of the day i don't believe that anyone is self-made um there are opportunities that people bring to you doors people open for you um in, in addition to the self-work that we do. Um, so I just think that that's very important um, to mention. And it's also gonna be a cool dynamic for us to dive into as far as how that works in a familial space. So I y'all mentioned that your other brother started tattooing and was that like the first exposure to the tattoo world or? Oh, no, 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 no. He wasn't tattooing. He got a real shitty tattoo. He got a bad oh, tattoo. Oh, he came home with a bad tattoo, not a tattoo machine. Okay, okay, come on, my bad, my bad. Right. And, and Tim saw this really shitty tattoo and decided, hey, I can, I can be a, I can do better, you know. So wow. Less slightly shittier tattoo. <laughs> Less slightly shittier. And were were you able to like have a conversation with him about like did he recognize that his tattoo was shitty? No, I think I think he knew it wasn't the best. Yeah, okay. but you know, when you don't know, you don't know. You know, a lot right. of people just get tatted. You know, they, yeah. want to they don't really care about the quality at the time. You know. Yeah. And so were you able to, did you ever fix the tattoo or did you ever tattoo yeah. your brother? You, you fixed it? Yeah, we covered, we put a dragon over that thing. Oh, yeah. a full cover up. Yeah. I love it. I love hearing it. I'm sure he's very thankful. <laughs> um, I'm curious to know where, like how you came to that conclusion of like, I can do a less shitty tattoo. Like, were you raised in an artistic household like were y'all raised in similar ways were you raised completely different like and where does the art come in you want me to take it yeah okay, okay i'll take it um well we were raised in different households mm -hmm. so my mom uh was an art major but she didn't use art as a profession but i was always drawn mm -hmm. always drawing for drawing since i was three um, it just kind of fell in my lap. Uh, the, my bro the brother that we were talking about, it wasn't that it was a bad tattoo, it was just a bad design. Mm. And I knew I could do a better design than what he had. And that's why the tattoo was better. The design was better, but technically the tattoo was the one that I did. Get it? Uh, so... <laughs> Different, definitely like, no, we, we were raised in a, this is, you know, take that question. Mm -hmm. We were raised in a household, but uh, similar though. Like our mom was like, I think our dad got a type. So, you yeah. know, it's, <laughs> it's just, you know, uh, it, it's just like, I think you can see it even in our personalities. My mom a little bit more firecracker than his mom. His mom real sweet and nice. And my mm -hmm. mom was the type that like, cuss you out and stuff. So, uh, um, as far as like, Art and stuff. I always like loved art. You know, um, I actually went to school for film, mm -hmm. so like um, drawing and and design had, was never been like always been my strong point. But you know, I feel like if you smart and you dedicate and you know you put the time and that effort into anything, yeah, I feel like anybody can. Yeah, draw. you can. You gotta have patience. Yeah, you just gotta have patience. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to do it? Like you know what I mean? Like so. Um, Definitely, I feel like that. 
makes me think of a, a question I was about to ask about is creativity and talent, like creative talent genetic, or is it more of a how you were raised thing, you know? And like, so Tim, you're speaking on the fact that you think like anyone can draw, it just takes patience. Um, I'm not too sure I have that patience or I'm not too sure I have that talent because <laughs> um, I'm just terrible at drawing, but you know, you, you pose a, a very interesting, um, you know, concept there how you frame that. Um, and then also just to hear that, you know, different moms, but you're still coming to, you know, the same like field of work. I don't know. It just, what do y'all think? Is, is it, are we blaming genetics? Are we giving the credit to genetics? Shout out to dad. Or? I'm not going to give the credit nah. to genetics on that. On that too. Yeah. On, yeah. I'm just daddy. No, it's cause more, it's a bigger plan. Behind yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah. See, I, I got into tattooing. I just, I just fell in love with it. Like, mm. got in, into tattooing for a completely different reason. Right. Mm. So, um, the genetics thing, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not a geneticist or whatever the right word is. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it's funny. You know, uh, it's totally genetic. Uh, genetics that uh, that I can see something and I can draw it and I can put it in paper without I don't know I I know it took a long time for me to get you know decent at it. Mm. Like when I picked it up, it wasn't. I picked up a pencil and a piece of paper. It wasn't like off to the races on mm. full scale, mm -hmm. full, full square box mm -hmm. off of there. You know, uh, it just took a long. It took it took a while. It took time, patience. Practice. That's why I say, you know, anybody can gotta have the patience and the will. Mm -hmm. The will. I, I mean, feel like he has the will. Um, he, you know, you just gotta be hungry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. You gotta. You gotta be. The, yeah, the word right. hungry. I feel like though, because when people see this, and I don't want them to get it twisted. Uh, you know, get it like, you know, definitely hungry, but more passion. Like, mm -hmm. like, you know, what I'm saying. It, like yeah, that's the word you have to be passionate about whatever you want to do mm -hmm. we ain't about it you ain't really trying to put that time behind it it ain't gonna come out good it's not gonna you know if you're trying to take the fast route it's not gonna you know probably turn out well to get the fast you know, route results. right you know what i mean so um <laughs> genetics I, I don't know i'm gonna beg to differ a little bit maybe so and only in the sense of it being genetics is in in the sense that uh we just come from good, good, which, uh, good, genes. good genes. Yeah, we come from good genes, you know? So uh, I'm a believer in that if you're smart enough, you can achieve whatever you want to. So it's not really not really a thing to like, you know, maybe genetics on the part that we both two intelligent people. Mm -hmm. and what mind to. For sure. Know, to, For sure. No, I definitely, uh, I definitely can agree with that. Um, in addition to maybe the genetics um, have contributed to your commitment you know, to whatever the craft is or your passion around whatever it is you're choosing to focus on. Because like how you said, it's, you you have to be passionate about it. You have to commit to, to this craft in order to get better at it. And some people can't do that. Some people will pick some shit up and drop it when it gets hard. But obviously that's not the case with y'all. Nah, yeah, yeah, we know several people. Yeah, but you know. Not, you know, maybe, and, and also for me, though, it's like, uh, you know, Tim, so everybody that's watching this, we see this interview, Tim is my big brother. I'm not the little, I'm not the big brother, I'm the little brother, so. Do people get that confused? Yeah, people get it all confused the all the time, all, all the, the time. time, all the time, I think it's the big. Maybe it's just because I know y'all, but I'm like, yeah. I, I, I see it. Right, right. I see it, so. no? <laughs> Me, for me, Most I, don't. yeah. My, Tim, I, are I, you I, the more immature even, one? Even, even <laughs> my, niece, even my niece, my niece is here right now, and and one day we talking, she's like, "What, uncle? You, you the <laughs> little brother? Like, yeah, your daddy, your daddy older than me." <laughs> Tim, that, that might speak to your maturity. <laughs> right, like no it's a good problem. To have. Nah, he's, 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 hey, hey, good he's, problem to have. Yeah, it's a good problem. <laughs> Uh, it's good for him, and maybe right, right. I look, I'm the mature one, right? right. Love, love to nah, see. No, but um, 
Um, my brother, he, he uh, for me, it's more mm -hmm. falling into line behind my brother. You know, I don't want to, I got, I got a furlough name kind of, you know, in, in front of me. So, mm -hmm. you know, hard work and that, you know, dedication is also, because I want to throw that out. Like, my brother is like my sensei. Also, you know, Roger Perella, he, he definitely is a mentor. But, you know, I learned from my brother, though. Like, you know, I'm, so, you know, I can't, I can't let him down or, or let I, or let I, like, Family name. Of course. Look. Yeah. You, you got a lot of it too. <laughs> can do it. I definitely want to get into that a little bit more. Um, so we know Tim's been tattooing uh, longer than you, Keach, and you were an apprentice in the shop that he's working in. Um, tell me about like how wh what was that dynamic like? Is it is it more difficult, do you think, than apprenticing somewhere where you don't know anybody or someone's not your family member? And then Tim, I'm eager to hear like what that experience was like for you, you know, um, mentoring your, your 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 little brother like that. Um, first, it's it's kind of hard to get an apprenticeship in the first place, like anywhere, like you know what I mean, especially from actual good artists. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean. Um, it, it is a situation. I'm I I'd be the first one to say, hey, I'm I'm super blessed. Like in a sense, like you know, I know the right people. And, but I spent a lot of time though in the industry, like, like you know, people don't know, like I, you know, me and Tim travel, like, you know, I do his like, like traveling, booking, especially like when we doing, when he was doing the uh, conventions and stuff like that. So me and him stayed traveling. So I was in the industry, like around it a lot before I started, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so apprenticing uh, like here at the shop, I definitely say it was easier, like and probably apprenticing somewhere else. Not saying like easier in the sense that I didn't have to grind hard because this is my brother. He gonna be like the hard, like next to myself. He the hardest critic that I got. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Because you know that's that's you know that's sensei. That's big bro. So mm -hmm. um, so as far but I'm I'm okay with that. I I like I love that actually. Like you know what I mean? I love, I love like hey don't you know don't coddle me. Let me know where I'm effing up at. Like you Better know what I mean? Somebody in the streets. Right, like you know, what I mean? and and then you know that that just you know give me you know let me know shoot when 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 Tim say oh bro you ready you can tattoo now I know I'm like you know they give you that vote of confidence like oh okay I know I'm ready now because yeah. I know on the Rudy poop when bro ain't giving no praise so you know when I really do something tight you know I, it's really like it's really warranted so you know uh, definitely as far as like the grind and stuff like that but that wasn't difficult because I like that. Yeah. you know um, but easy is in the sense that like hey i don't have to do normal apprentice stuff like you know what i mean i don't have to do no grunt work get no coffee or no like that like i do it on my own accord i would do i would do yeah, that doing my yeah. i would do it on my own because i know what an apprentice does but right. no one like ass or force like i come in the shop and just clean up and stuff like that just because like you You're know not scrubbing toilets with a toothbrush huh <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody asking. That's you crazy. know, but I'm definitely like, I come in like when Corona hit, come in, spray the shop down, like, right. you know, make sure that, you know, we all good. Right. We all like, you know, nobody got to ask or for So, you know, easy in the sense that ain't nobody like, you know, trying to make you do humu humiliating work. Right. But, Intimidate you. Mm -hmm. So, as far as my apprenticeship on that end, it was good. It was easy. Love working with my brother. Like, we, you know what I mean? We like, I ain't like this is my best friend. We tight. Like, you know that's I mean? one thing I wasn't gonna do. I wasn't gonna put him through the bullshit. Right. You know, make him work and you know, teach him how to do what he needed to do. Right. But overall, like all the extra just to make sure you're loyal, you're not gonna like use his gift, mm. or his craft that I'm giving you, mm. you know, for miscellaneous reasons or whatever. Like you're really serious about this. We didn't have to do that. Cause I knew he was serious. Right. Thirty year old grown ass man. Like uh yeah. want to learn how to tattoo. So. Right. Yeah, I love that. I think um like you know how we mentioned when we first started the apprenticeship uh journey is a very difficult one already. Um and I love hearing that you are already ready to omit the bullshit. Like I really don't understand like what role the bullshit plays. 
besides like how you mentioned saying possibly like seeing if they're serious but at the same time like somebody's I feel like your worth ethic is going to show you if you're serious or not right like I don't have to make you run circles around in order to see you're serious or what do you think about that I I came up under like an old biker kind of you know biker tattoo guy so not not one but like like several several (laughs) nine artists I came up under some were like you know majority were actually like super cool super generous you know but they came up under like that old traditional apprenticeship and for the most part, they tried to bring me up that way. Mm-hmm. So I understand, um, like, why they would make someone clean trophies for the first three weeks of their apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. Clean trophies, and that's the one job that I had. But if you can't clean trophies for three weeks, then maybe you don't want to learn, you know? What First does that all, have to do with tattooing, Tim? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know you. When you come into my shit and you want me to teach you how to tattoo, and I don't know you, no, nah, you get on these trophies. You put on these trophies. Do a background check. Damn, like. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm. It's it's weird. I'm not even gonna lie, and, and I just I just totally <laughs> just said what I just said, and I still feel like um, if a young person came into the shop, you know, not a grown man, not somebody that you know. Also, like if it was somebody that I knew, I know they worked ethic. I know how they, I know how they grind. I know that they serious. Then there's really no reason to kind of put them through that type of stuff. But if a young whippersnapper came in and was like, "Hey, can you teach me how to like tattoo," mm-hmm. I'd be like, I, "I don't know you from a can of paint. I don't know this man. Right. I feel sorry for this man. Like you know what I mean? So, so I, I would, I would, I would think he would have to clean trophy too for at least a couple weeks. Like you know what I mean? Just so it's like. You, you know, but, here you but for me, at the end of the, at the end of that, no, I definitely am going to like, hey, like, mm-hmm. it's, you know, I'm not going to make you do nothing crazy, not do nothing, you know, specific. Yeah. And yeah. if you really serious, just like I did, no one asked me to, but I would come in and just do that, some of that work just, just cause, mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? I'm like, you're super serious. You're going to come in and somebody got to give you a craft where you can make money. You can, like, you know what I mean? You got to learn something where it's like, like, great, you can have a career from it. Yeah. And you know, you know, this is you know, it's basically not gonna cost you anything, but some like some work. It, it depends. Some yeah. some tattoos require like money. Yeah, some do. Or an apprenticeship. Yeah. So like, like if I'm getting money, then yeah, I wanna I need to be learning like day one. What the right. Fuck? Oh yeah. So money, I yeah. Be, I, I shouldn't be you no know, motherfucking trophies. Yeah. But no, if you're just doing me a favor, then I didn't I didn't have to pay for my apprenticeship, mm. but, but I worked. But you paid you know, in work, though. Paid like, you work. know, you paid in work. So. And so do you think it's more like about like reflecting values, Tim? Like when you're talking about like, the cleaning trophies, like what do you think was the skill or the or the value, if it, whether it's like an actual skill or like a mental skill, what was the skill you think you got so, out of it's, that? It's a mental thing. Me, I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty mentally mm-hmm. stable. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially when I started apprenticing because I apprenticed at 30 something you know like this is more I guess more so for younger uh, tattoo hopefuls right. tattoo hopefuls um, that want everything right here right now mm-hmm. and know you have to hum- you're going to have to humble yourself mm-hmm. you have to you learn especially if, you, if you've already tried the tattoo and you think you know what you're doing and you don't know shit mm-hmm. it's, it's a way of humbling you a person that thinks they know everything. Mm, humility, okay. Yeah. But do you feel like for that, do you think that that was already a value that was instilled in y'all's family group? Mm. And so do you feel like that's one of the reasons? Yeah. Or is it just simply like an yeah. age? Because you I know some motherfuckers who are 50 and not You humble, humble yourself pretty early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Growing up as a pro. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got, yeah, you got to know how to, yeah. you know, be no, humble you gotta around. Yeah, you got to roll with the punches. You no got to know how to be humble. Soft. Nah. You gotta be yeah. You, you it's, know. it's. I mean, we got, you know, it's a lot of us. So, 
you know, besides me, it's seven of us, mm -hmm. you know, with me and Tim. So we the last two, we the youngest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I ain't, I ain't, yeah, I ain't no, ain't that soft, ain't that coddled, ain't, yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta know how to just like, you know, be humble and, you know, do your thing. So mm -hmm. it, I hard, be yeah, work hard and just be humble. That's how, you know, that's how dad thing, kind of stay out the way. Mm -hmm. Be the street, do your thing. So, love it. Love hearing it. Um, so I know Tim, you spoke on your mother being having an art major, mm -hmm. and he she said that you did film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other artists in the family? Any other influence that you think that you could put it on? Wow. So interesting for me. <laughs> I'm inspired by my nephew. My nephew, I got a couple. Okay, yeah, our younger after us are like, yeah, yeah like we nephew, got a nephew. Uh, his Instagram is Toonomaly. Mm. Uh, yeah. Amazing artist. Yeah. Amazing artist. Awesome. Yeah. We'll definitely tag him in this. Toonomaly, you said? Yep. And yeah. how old is he? <laughs> <laughs> He's older than that, dude. He's older than me. <laughs> So I don't know where he's at on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. older than me. He, he is, so he's our nephew, but he's, uh, he's what, nine months older than me? Okay. No, yeah, March. His birthday wow. in March. So, and so did, is, did he get started in art because of? No, he older than I. Oh, so, no, he just, he just, he just been, like me, just picked up a pen, marker, this, whatever. He's crazy. He's yeah. been like, yeah. Yeah, so he's good. been crazy his like whole life. So yeah. with as far as art wise, but that's like the only other one though. That's what's up. That's what's up. So I feel like we're getting to the the summary, which is it's not genetic at all. <laughs> Y'all just no, no, I got lucky. Like, it just happened that way. Because I, 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 I got two bad. grown kids and not one of them grows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Last, last two. Uh, <laughs> Skeets were just artistic as <laughs> art. That's, it. <laughs> that's art. I love it. Right. No, I mean, I think that's cool. I do think that, you know, when it comes to nature versus nurture, it's, it is a lot more about how you were raised and your experience that you have um, versus, you know, the genetic makeup. Um, do y'all think that your talent is constantly evolving, or do you think that you'll one day hit a ceiling? Well, here's the thing. Uh, we're, we're getting older. You know, everyone gets older. Everyone, you know, God forbid, but God willing, keep having birthdays. Mm -hmm. So you will get better in time, but your body will start. You know, mm. gonna lose, I'm gonna lose my hand eventually. Mm -hmm. So even though I, know I can do this better, I know I can uh, tattoo well, and I know what to do. Mm -hmm. My hands might might give up on me, or they will eventually. Mm -hmm. They will. So yeah, you'll get better, but eventually your body's gonna be like, yeah, bro, you might as well put that down. Mm -hmm. That's why you know you want to have other ways. You gotta have a backup plan. Not even a necessarily a backup plan, but a next plan. Like what's next? What's next after test? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I feel like definitely uh, every. So it's funny. I just had a tattoo come in today, mm -hmm. like right before uh, the interview, and it's something that I did when I was apprentice, and I was like, "Sick, like, damn, I'm kind of worried about this tattoo because it's the apprentice work. <laughs> like, what is it gonna look like?" But it actually looked it kind of pretty decent. It looked good. I wasn't even tripping. I was like, okay, I can work with this. I was I was actually really happy. Like, okay, yeah, all right, we could we could finish this up and this be dope. Right. So definitely, I'm not the same tattoo I was a year ago because like I was apprenticing and now I'm like it's a year of not of of just being like a tattooer. So the things that I would do a year ago, I wouldn't do today. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you hit a ceiling in art. He, you're not really doing art. You you're like, like you you're, know you're I mean? comfortable with, with where you're at. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's 
don't think I'll ever be comfortable. Yeah, but yeah. Like, I mean, I, and for me, I just like kind of just just got my feet wet as far as this medium of art. Like, you Especially know what I mean? Especially next to Roger. Right, 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 right. Like, right. I better come with it. Right, like, and that's a, and that's another reason why, like, you know, I feel like, you know, I am at where I am is because I tattoo next to these dudes every day, and it's like, you know, try to soak up as much as I can, like, you know what I mean? But put it out in my own kind of way. So, uh, yeah, constantly evolving. If you're not evolving, if you're not growing, if your art not changing, then I don't think you're doing art. So, mm -hmm. or you're not, you're not, you're not trying to. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that you know growth is something that if you're not doing it, you're you're doing something actively to prevent it. You know, I just I honestly think that growth does come naturally. Um, yeah. The way the world is set up. So yeah. that's that's very interesting. Speaking of growth, I want to transition a little bit. Um, Tim, Ink Master, Ink Angels. Okay. You won. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The best tattoo artist in Atlanta, according to <laughs> TV, the Paramount Network. My brother is the best, best tattoo artist in Atlanta. Okay. Was, shout out to my, my homie Roger too. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Roger was um, on there as well. Um, and, uh, so two amazing artists on 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 a, a very great. Oh. And I'll say interesting show. Cause y'all know I'm about to get into this reality TV stuff. I got my hands on my hips if you can't see. Okay. Um, how do you feel? Let's make the transition from growth to Ink Angels. How do you feel you've grown since then? Uh, I feel like I've grown as an artist. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't help but grow after being on this show and and the following show the lit that you know, mm -hmm. after uh, just working next to. Real, real solid tattooers and picking up. Do you think the expectations were a lot higher after after you won the first one? Um, or do you think they eased up on you a little bit? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. Well, who eased up on you? I guess viewers, producers. Uh, no, nah, I don't feel like any. I don't. I don't feel any pressure or way that. Mm. No, no, I felt fine. I, I, I didn't feel that way. Mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe people felt that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask me. I'm just trying to go on there and do some good tattoos. For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> what, um, I, I had an interview recently with um, Bang and Danger Dave, uh, who both been awesome. on uh, Ink Master as well, both um, Atlanta based artists. Um, and we're just talking about reality TV. I'm curious to know your thoughts on it. Um, I'm curious to know if you feel like you were well represented. Um, and from you, Keech, I'm curious to know how it was seeing your brother on on TV and if you how you feel like he was represented. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, you know, on my exit interview, I had a, I had a lot of a lot of things to say. And um, yeah, I don't think I was represented well. Of course not. Of course, they pick and choose what they want to put on TV. Right. And uh, you know, I just I'm just not I'm not all for reality TV. I'm all for the exposure. Right. I'm all for uh, I I got. A lot of haters, then I got a oh, shit ton of fans from mm -hmm. being on that show, and mm -hmm. not fans, but you know, people who want to get tattooed by me. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the things they was hating on you for? Say, huh? What were some of the things they was hating on you for? Like, I wasn't as good as uh, my homie. It's like, dude, I don't give a shit. Different styles. <laughs> yeah, different styles. <laughs> different styles. Yeah. So you, you can't even compare that. Uh, yeah, that's very it's it's interesting. I feel like yeah. I think it's absolutely hilarious when people think that their opinions are important and like they actually matter and they they pay your bills. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. what reality TV has oh. Oh. created. <laughs> reality TV has put the power in the viewers' hands 
to make them feel like their opinions matter, but they don't. <laughs> That's my thing about it. That's literally uh, why. Social <laughs> media is a part of it too, though. Yeah, social, social media, media is a part, part of that uh, catalyst also, though. Right. You know, you're yeah, yeah, everybody. Can, you, know, you just throw your rock, like you right. throw your rock. Yeah. Like you know. Yeah, my stance yeah. is, yo, if if you don't if you don't fuck with it, there's so many other pages and people you could be looking at. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't have to be here. You it's don't have to be here. <laughs> yeah. it just, you don't you don't have to be here. Right. Like, yeah. Reality TV isn't reality. It's whatever they want it to be. Right. I think no, the idea started off, honestly, as like a great idea. Like, yo, let's just have some live shit and see what happens. Let's put these people in a situation, a competition, and see what the fuck they come up with. That's I think that's awesome. I think sometimes that's when you have your most creative um, you know, uh yeah. like, you know, I mean, times. But take a situation and, and you know, they might not feed you all day. When they, yeah. <laughs> okay. and, and when intense situations, you know, uh, they might, like for me, like where I was tattooing, I think of the last one on Ink, on Ink Master, the, the, like the final one that I was on, the, the AC was blowing right on me, like hard. Like y'all can't control that? I know yeah. y'all can control this AC. It's like, <laughs> Blowing on me, like my nipples is hard, like Damn. for real. Didn't give like, my boy a snuggie or nothing. <laughs> Damn. Was the client complaining? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so it, it's it's little shit like that. Like, come right. on, man. Come on. Just fucking with um, you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I get it. Uh, it's funny. Uh, so I didn't watch the show until like. Last year, I didn't. I didn't watch. The show. I didn't like, and I still haven't watched the uh, the last show, bro. Was on, um, but the Ink Angels. Uh, I didn't watch it until just like super recently. Okay. So uh, it was funny. We was in. Uh, why? Actually, if I can, if I can interrupt you, why? Uh, I I kind of knew it. I already knew what happened. So <laughs> he was at the yeah, I was like, I'm actually in the. I'm actually in the episode. So okay. yeah, like. Like talking, like they, I'm not gonna say nothing. You, knew but talk, you didn't need to see their interpretation of the truth. You knew the truth. Yeah, and yeah. That's I, what I, that's what yeah, I, I was at the finale, so I'm like in the episode or whatever. And, and like, and it's crazy because reality TV is not like reality TV. But um, when I finally did watch the episode, no matter of fact, I'm gonna jump back. I'm gonna give you a little quick story. Mm -hmm. We're in Lebanon, Texas, right? And uh, we doing like the, you know, Tim doing the like uh, convention after the show or whatever. And so we're in Lubbock and a lady like is talking to Tim. She's like, yeah, I saw you on the show. And then, you know, she found out that I was Tim's brother. And she was like, so, oh, your brother's on the show. Da, da, da. And she asked me questions and stuff. And I'm like, I didn't watch the show. The lady got mad. She was pissed. The lady got upset. Like, you did like, not I live up to her <laughs> expectations. No. <laughs> Yo, you ain't watched the show. That's your brother. That's your brother. You don't look like an artist. What you do? <laughs> she started hey, going he... in on you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, it didn't make me watch the show. So, I hope that lady see this. And I didn't watch the show until I wanted to watch it. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, when I finally watched the show, no, nah, it was a crazy, crazy. And I'm like, Boy, they make these boys look like they not cool at all. Right. Where we like family over here. Right. Yeah, it's like not like we are. Like, like right. Roger, that's our brother. Right. Like, Literally, Roger is uh, in the building. <laughs> right, right. In the building right now. Right. <laughs> Say what's up, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, Roger. Right. So, yeah. You know. they, they twisted it. They framed it completely different than, than what it is. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think it started off as a great idea, and now it is just. I think it would be cool something else. Tattoos, you know. Yeah. Say it one they more time. And uh, I think it would be. Oh. I think it would be better if you know if they focus more on the tattoos and less right. on the bullshit. The drama. No bullshit happening, but let it happen naturally because it's gonna happen. 
exactly. And they just didn't do that. It was a, it was a lot of favoritism. It was a lot of, you know, they not they didn't have a lot of us. Mm. Campuses. Mm. I had issues with that. Mm. You're not gonna see a lot of us because we're not watching that shit. Right. Right. Us. We're not watching that. We're watching uh, the other show. <laughs> Unfortunately. You know, I ain't hating on nobody. You know. But they not, they not, we're not watching. Yeah, we're not watching. Yeah. 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 So yeah. they're not going to have For sure. Have anything. For sure. No, I definitely see that as a huge problem um, in diversity in the Sassu community. Um, and uh, while we still have a lot of diversity, um, a lot of our clients, I feel like, are still not as diverse as it can be. Um, and like the people, our patrons are not as diverse as it can be. And that might be an exposure issue. That might just be a cultural issue that we got to work within our own you know, community and come back home and talk about it. Um, but I also think that that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm doing ink therapy. Um, art and tattooing is such a, a huge part of my life um, as I am a Black woman from mechanics wheel you know so it's like there's you can be one of us and whatever your the way you describe one of us is and still you know have a passion for this type of stuff we don't need to be watching love and hip-hop all the time um so uh i love that show <laughs> our show like that show that's around the world surrounded by tattoos oh gosh keith do you have any uh any plans to audition for some reality tv shows uh, nah, mm, nah, nah, I'm good. be real good at reality TV. I, I'm not even gonna lie. I think I would be good at reality TV, but I don't, like, uh, if, if they would do something where it was, like, me and my brother, like, mm -hmm. we, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good by myself, but yeah, uh, we good. great as a team, though. So, I see like, that. Yeah. Yeah. like, like. I'm, I'm with Keith on it, and I'm with Keith on this. I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not good by yourself, but honestly, Tim, I'm with Keith on this. I feel like the dynamic between y'all is awesome, is a different level, you know? So, not to say he can't do it by himself. I mean, he could be, I already know he's a one-man show, but the dynamic between y'all, for sure, for sure. I think yeah, that would yeah, be. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm, I'm good by myself, but if it was some sort of situation, it's like, oh, if I can do it with my brother, we'll be that'd be a great show. That's a show that I watch. For sure. I show about to be a, you have to be a little bit of a jerk to watch my show. <laughs> <laughs> to watch me by myself. I would have to be play the bad guy in a reality show. Love. I have to be the. Yeah, you'd be like the Larry. Yeah. yeah. You'd be the Larry David. Yeah. Come in every night. Like. <laughs> You know, uh, whatever the guy's name from uh, Curb, Curb. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I come um, in every night. Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. save the day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to move forward a little bit. Um, I got some tattoo news for y'all. Um, tattoo news. Recently, we had a Vietnam tattoo convention. Conventions are coming back. Yay! But also, no. <laughs> no. Recently, we Vietnam had a tattoo convention. In the photos, I'll drop a photo right now. There were no masks <laughs> whatsoever. I'm not really sure on the numbers in Vietnam, but I know it's not zero. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just very mm. interesting. Um, I, I, I talked to Keech about this. Tim, I'm not sure if he told you, but I have COVID. Right now, I have COVID. I am quarantined. Holy shit. Yes, I'm being quarantined right. I know I make it look good, but I'm I'm quarantining right now because I tested positive for COVID. They got me. Damn, they, they got, got me. <laughs> Damn. No, so, I, 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 I it was all the all the well wishes and yeah, stuff. Man, you know, you know. I feel like you have any symptoms. I do. I do. I um. I lost my smell. I lost taste. Um, those were recently, probably within the, so I probably started feeling weird and had a really bad headache maybe about like a week ago, a little over a week ago. It was last Monday, I believe, Sunday or Monday. And um, I, I told everyone in the house, I was like, hey, I'm feeling weird. I'm going to quarantine just off GP. Um, and I got tested uh, last Wednesday. It came back on Sunday, I believe, um, that it was positive. And so um, 
luckily I've been quarantining this entire time. But um, right now my symptoms are, yeah, I would man. say more on the mild side. I have headaches pretty regularly, but they're not super severe. And then my loss of taste and smell. Besides that, I'm so blessed to not have diarrhea, vomiting, none of that. Um, but this just goes to show like even, first of all, Atlanta is off the chain. Let's just put that out there. We are wide the fuck open. And yeah. I obviously have been part of the problem. And I'm gonna do better, but like this no mask shit that people are doing is just it's inappropriate. And the not quarantining is inappropriate. We, we hey, uh, I, I props to you for saying that though. Like, yeah. like yeah. respect, big respect. Yeah. Like, cause you know, <laughs> it's funny because we, we was chopping it up before the interview, and I'm like, he, in a joking way, I was like, did I see you out in about? Hey, I'm not a little while ago. Where was? Said, nah, the spot was empty, but I do got <laughs> But that's the thing. Like, like even if I, you like, take, like, all the precautions, you can't cut yeah. those corners. You can't, like, even no, though I thought no. I was being the best on my best behavior, empty club, you know, I said, keep your video, like, look, ain't nobody in here. He so did. I received. <laughs> Receipt, <laughs> there it was a ghost town in there, like for real. But guess was, what? The motherfuckers I was with, I guess they <laughs> had been somewhere and they had been somewhere, and that's the problem. Right. Damn. Yeah, so they got me, y'all. Uh, um, so I'm gonna continue to, to quarantine um and 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 drink this water, push fluids, um, taking vitamins, stuff like that. But but back to the convention season, y'all. I have part of tattoo news I have is all right, I'm gonna call them out, Villain Arts. We have three, four upcoming conventions. First of all, the Atlanta convention, of course, because Atlanta is just wide the fuck open, oh, is wow. going to be March 12th through the 14th, 2021. Oh. Mm. So that's, that's the first Villain Arts one. Then we got Cleveland, June 11th through the 13th. Okay, they're waiting a little bit longer on that, but still it's it's, that's recent. I mean, that's, that's upcoming. Uh, Philadelphia is going to be September 10th through the 12th. And then New Orleans, um, right now, they have that one as the final one of the year as of now for November 19th through the 21st. So we got a lot of cities um, inviting large groups of people <laughs> in one room in a building. And uh, I don't it's know. It's scary. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's real scary. Atlanta's been doing that for since since we went April since April like we've been well, open since May well, yeah, yeah since open since May, May, open May. May right so Atlanta's been like that since May yeah and, you know we try our best to, like everybody like yo you can't come we appointment only so you can't mm -hmm. walk into our shop and just you yeah, know get a tattoo door, so, so um you know everybody got to wear a mask so we try to take our precautions and stuff like we try that to do our part our part you know but it's crazy the city is like wide open and there's people out there just wild right. like you know have a convention in march i mean i don't know Shoot, that's, yeah right. that's kind of you know that's cutting it kind of i get a free booth for yeah but not even free booth but like you know i mean yes that's you know appreciate it that's proper like, yeah, thank I, you but I, like I in this it, moment but, though no not right now. Like, not right now. Like, I just you know, wonder, like, are, I know every every place has been open, even in Atlanta, has, like, required masks for entry. Atlanta does not require you to keep on the mask, which is absolutely ridiculous. But, so, like, masks for entry is one thing, but I'm hoping that they do something like, you have to show a negative COVID test, you know, like, our actual on-site COVID test, but I just doubt they're going to do anything like that. And, all, and, that's, and those rapid COVID tests, they're not suit they're not really accurate and not only that like if they did somebody asked for that that's like it's a violation yeah. everybody asks you like for your covid test so yeah. you know and if um, you've never been tattooed you know maybe, it's, they'll, maybe, they'll, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll enforce the mask that's what i was about to say it's really like on just everybody part bro like this the i mean i understand yo small businesses hey we gotta eat people gotta work like man just do your part and wear your mask man wearing a mask is a the small minimum do it's small like a small to thing to have to do is wear your mask. Like, you right. know what I mean? For sure. And we were, you know, chopping it up right now. We're, we'll be fully masked up right now. They were so way. we way in the back, in the back, in the back. So like, mm -hmm. you know, you know. Yeah. No, I appreciate y'all doing your part. Set an example. 
Got over COVID. Got over COVID. Mm. My dad. So you know, it's a real thing. He spent two weeks in the hospital. Wow. Like, you know what I mean? Right. It's yeah. real. It, it is real. And um and of course, as you look yeah. at yeah. 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 Love yeah. it. Love yeah. to see it. Wait, let me get mine. We need this. Yes. Just so I could drink something. Yeah. Oh, oh snap. Oh yeah. like that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you got tight. these. That's tight. That's tight. Okay. I'm not sure how safe this is though, because like I'm being one. It's tight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Like it's kind of tight, y'all. It's, it's safe for everybody around. You're going to keep the things. But if you like had a, a surgical mask under it, though, like yeah, you you know, know, but I can get it though. Like you go out there and you know you don't want something to touch you. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, so what we are going to do with Keach and Tim is uh, I have 12 questions for them. And uh, they have pieces of paper that say either me or their brother's name. And basically, we're just going to find out, hopefully, the truth <laughs> about the furlough brothers. But you know, from yeah. talking about people be flexing sometimes in, in, in this game. So, so we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. So, first question: Y'all got your piece of paper ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be looking at each other when you answer. Just uh, okay. Right. First. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Question one: Who's the hardest worker? All right, question two. Who did better in school? Question three. Who's more likely to call someone drunk at 3 a.m.? <laughs> All right. <laughs> question four, who watches the most TV? Question five, who is more social? Question six, who's the best athlete? Mm. Question seven, who's the family favorite? Question eight, who's more likely to be arrested? Depends on what. <laughs> Depends on what? <laughs> I I feel like I don't know why I had in there. I don't know why I had on that. I ain't gonna do that too much. Take one for the team. <laughs> All right. Question nine, who's the biggest hoe? In the past, because we know, we know. Tim, I know your situation. Keech, are you are you locked are you locked down, Keech? Yeah, I'm locked. Okay, all right. So in the past, in the past, who had the biggest whole, whole tendencies? Yeah, we talking your friends. Those are your enemies. Past life. Past past life. Past past, past, past life. I past past life. Question ten. Who takes longer to get ready? I don't know. We some dudes though, yeah. so it's kind of like on a dude scale. On a dude takes four scale? minutes, and who takes three minutes? <laughs> right, that's what it is. Who takes like, what? Who takes, who takes three? four minutes, and who <laughs> takes three minutes? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> longer to get ready. Okay. Good. Question 11, who has a better taste in music? I was gonna say both ways, really though. Like, it's crazy. Cause Tim would be playing something that I'm like, bro, what that is? And I'll be playing something, he'll be like, hey bro, what, hey, man, what's, hey, what's that? So we, 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 we the same is. He's secretly Shazam in my playlist. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just we do something best like- Best invention ever. <laughs> Best adventure ever. All right, last question. Who's the messiest? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, now we, we, nobody's messy. I, I, now, hold on. We playing against each other. Our other siblings, though, we, I would say them. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Then, like, nah, I dad didn't play that. Like, nah. All right. I, I expect to see tidy rooms, tidy. <laughs> uh, I already didn't know at work your work your stations are are pristine, so that doesn't. But that's the same thing. Like I had this whole thing where I used to get I, I did an Instagram every day of me making my bed up in the morning. Mm. I throw that in. <laughs> I say me. I'm the messiest. 
Really? Right, I, we we can't count on you to make your bed every morning, Tim. Not every morning. No. Oh no, I make mine every I morning. Share, I share a bed. So we talking about the minimum <laughs> scale of so, messy. Then no, I, I, I don't. I don't, I don't share a bed. Yeah, but I think, I yeah. So I get up and make my bed up. If and I make it, it up, someone will be in. It. Hey, I, I I have done that though. I have done that. Like I have made this bed up while you're in it. Like there you go. Like, Tuck in. Up. Yeah, wrapped up in that bed. Love to see it. Love to see it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being willing to uh you know play that that uh, TikTok sibling challenge. Thank you so much for being willing to talk to me today. Um, again, uh, for the viewers, um, Tim Furlow and Cage Furlow. Tim's uh, Instagram is at Tim Furlow, F U R L O W. And Keech's Instagram is at Fake Jesus. Make sure you, that you follow them. If you do not follow them, you are asleep. And I'm uh, disappointed. Um, also, follow Black All Tattoos. Um, if you don't follow Ink Therapy already, I don't know what brought you here, but welcome. Make sure you follow Ink Therapy Official. Um, shout out to our sponsors again. Um, our next episode, we're going to be recording on January 23rd. I will still be behind the screen because I'm going to be quarantined. quarantined. Because I'm going to be you responsible get, yeah. from now on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You yeah. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely am holding myself to higher um, expectations from, from now on. Um, don't be like me. Don't let it jump on you first before you do better. Be better so you don't have to. Hey, what's the saying, though? When you know better, you do better. So, yeah. you know. There we go. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thank you, guys. Again, any last remarks before we close out? Uh, no, nah, that's it. Hey, uh, go check out the link in my uh, shameless plug real quick. Go check out the link. Let me see the pleasure. What's the link? It is, uh, if you be cool, you are cool. Yes. So, I mean, that's an original quote from me. You know what I mean? Fake Jesus. Love Keach it. furlough. So go, go to my Instagram. Check that out. Hit the link. Go buy your hoodie. You know what I mean? For sure. Uh, go check my brother's uh, Instagram. I'm going to just plug his, if, even if he go don't. Because yeah. he uh, doesn't. He doesn't do stuff like that. But go uh, and go over there and get a hoodie from Tim, too. He got T-shirts and hoodies. And uh, I got T-shirts and hoodies, too. So go check out a friend of my brother's and uh, get you some apparel and stuff like that. Like okay. I tell you, I'm good. But I'm great. We're great with each other. Like yeah, y'all see me next time with my uh furlough uh merchandise. I won't I won't have this on next time, but yeah, right, today yeah. I have the Hurret shit. Next so, time I have the fake Jesus and then the, the Tim Furlow. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> we'll uh, see you next right. time. Thank you. Bye. All right, later. later.